Concepts webinar. Uh, today we'll be giving you an introduction uh, to Quantrix. We feel like there's five key concepts that every new user should learn uh, to get off to a, a great start with the application. So just a, a, a quick couple of bullet points on the agenda. I'll be doing some introductions of the staff, um, some key staff that you need to know. We'll do a little bit of a Quantrix uh, company overview. Uh, then I'll get right into a slide about the five key concepts and provide a demo uh, that demonstrates those concepts. And we'll leave a little bit of time at the end uh, for questions and answers. I'll do my best to get done in, in uh, 25, 30 minutes uh, to be respectful of your time. And, uh, but hopefully this will give you a good start and a good indication of what, of what Quantrix is. So just some key folks. Uh, I'll be doing the webinar today. I'm Mike Salisbury. I'm the director of Quantrix. I've been with the company uh, since 2002. Uh, there's some other, other key folks that you should know about. Uh, James Kipling is our product manager uh, for the desktop application and also helps in pre-sales support. Uh, Tom Ahern, uh, he's the account manager for North America and the rest of the world. And Holly Perry, who just joined us uh, recently, uh, she's the account manager for UK and Europe. Easy way to reach us all, uh, just email service at Quantrix.com and any one of us would be happy to help you uh, with any uh, questions you have about Quantrix. So let's learn a little bit more about uh, Quantrix and a little bit about our history. So uh, we are located in Portland, Maine uh, in the United States. Uh, we're founded in 2002. Uh, uh, pleased to say I was there uh, at that time and our very first release was version 1 uh, back in the fall of 2003. Our uh, parent company is IDBS. Uh, they have headquarters uh, in the United Kingdom. They integrated uh, Quantrix into their electronic lab notebook software back in the 2005-06 uh, timeframe. They quickly became our biggest customer, our, our biggest fan, uh, and they had an opportunity to acquire Quantrix in 2010, and they did so, and it's been a great partnership and relationship since then. Uh, IDBS just briefly tends to sell to the pharmaceutical life sciences, R&D type industries, uh, whereas Quantrix sells to more of a financial budgeting, planning, uh, forecasting use case, although obviously it's used in a wide uh, variety of ways. But we have a good relationship with IDBS. They handle all our back office accounting, human resources, all the uh, the backbone type work that needs to be done to stand up a, a business. Well, in Quantrix in Portland, Maine, we're able to really concentrate on the product, deliver that product to IDBS, and also deliver that product to our customers that do budgeting, planning, forecasting, forward-looking type of analysis with Quantrix. So it's a great relationship uh, with IDBS. We released uh, version 6 in January of 2016. We're up to 6.2 now as our mid-year release. Uh, we Try to release uh, three to four times a year. We want to be very quick, uh, very iterative uh, with the feedback we get from our customers. And we want to release uh, new products, uh, uh, new features in the product as, as quickly as we can. So very active development cycle. Uh, if you get feedback into us, uh, uh, we, uh, we can turn it around very quickly. Our annual user conference, I just like to make folks aware of that is every fall uh, right here in Portland. If you've never been to, to Maine up here in the United States, it's a great place to visit. Uh, this year the user conference is October 25th through the 27th and they uh, it's a great opportunity to learn more about Quantrix. We do a lot of sessions around uh, new features, uh, product roadmap priorities, and I think one of the most interesting things is you also get an opportunity to meet other Quantrix users. Um, you know, Quantrix, we, in my next slides, we'll, I'll show you a bit about our, our customer base. Uh, but Quantrix, uh, is, is the user conference is a great opportunity uh, to uh, meet other users, and I want to show you another user here. Uh, his name's uh, Rich Lopez, and uh, he will be coming to the conference this fall. And, and Rich is uh, uh, term the Quantrix Authority. Uh, he is a user on his own time, is, has put up over 125 videos on different uh, techniques and uh, aspects of Quantrix. Uh, and he's uh, very adept with the tool, and he's happy to help you and, and learn more about that about the application. So along with this webinar where I hope to show you the five key concepts, I encourage you to browse Rich's uh, library of, of Quantrix videos. I think you'll be uh, quite pleasantly surprised and pleased uh, on, the, on the help that Rich can give. So uh, customers, uh, more fast facts. We are deployed in over 1,100 organizations in 50 plus countries around the world. Um, like I said earlier, uh, we're popular with the financial investment type of organizations, budgeting, planning, forecasting. You can see some common names, uh, some common logos over on the right hand side. We do have some uh, traction in a couple of other verticals too, around planning for energy, uh, oil wells, uh, 
uh, things of that nature, and along with agriculture, uh, some of the largest agricultural uh, companies in the world that grow strawberries, other types of plants uh, use Quantrics for their production planning and forecasting of the of the demand that they need uh, to grow to grow their uh, food and berry. Uh, items. Our technology underpins some of the core businesses of several of our multinational organizations, uh, including our parent company IDBS. And through our partnership uh, with our parent company IDBS, uh, over 75% of the top 20 pharma, co pharma companies in the world, close to over 40,000 users alone, uh, use Quantrix. So we're a well-established company. We've been around for a long time. We're not going anywhere. We're actively iterating on the product, and we're happy to receive your feedback as it moves forward. So what is Quantrix really? Well, Quantrix is a real-time, in-memory, multi-dimensional calculation engine. So we, we give you the ability to model your business problems, model your forecasting needs in a multi-dimensional way. So no longer do you have to, are you forced into a flat 2D spreadsheet, you can use the dimensionality of Quantrix and build a, a forward-looking forecasting model that's extremely powerful and gives that gives you some extremely powerful uh, modeling capabilities right in, right in your hands. Um, it's perfect for budgeting, planning, forecasting. Uh, so if you have that need and you're looking at Quantrix, that's a, certainly a sweet spot for us. Uh, but like a spreadsheet, you can really use Quantrix for a variety of things. Uh, we have uh, some scientific uh, use cases through our parent company, IDPS, of course. Uh, I know of a customer that decodes uh, 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 DNA sequences uh, with Quantrix. So if it involves numbers, if it involves data, if it involves dimensionality, uh, Quantrix can be uh, generally a good fit. We have the ability to integrate with virtually any data source um, that you have. So if your data database or data warehouse is JDBC compliant and you can hook up to a JDBC connection, uh, Quantrix uh, can facilitate data imports into Quantrix as well as exports uh, to standard CSV files or data pushes back um, to a database as well. And it's self-service modeling. I think this is one of the key points is that you know, we want to put the, hand, the power of the Quantrix modeling engine into the business user into the hands of the business user, the one that needs to make the decisions about uh, the direction that the company needs to go in. Uh, we don't. We we love IT. We want to be partners with IT, but we want IT to be a light touch here. We want. Uh, the folks that need to do the self-service modeling need to quickly make those decisions to be able to do that, and, I, I, and we believe that you can uh, with this tool. So, uh, for those uh, that are joining us today, uh, we're on the assumption that you're new to Quantrix and you're checking it out for the first time. And so there's really five key concepts in Quantrix that we want to uh, impart and help you understand. Uh, one is the dimensionality of Quantrix. So we'll be talking about how to set up dimensions, how to think about dimensions in the model that you're working with. Formulas are different. Uh, so we write formulas separated from the cells. Uh, so we'll be talking about using formulas, using real words to describe those formulas. Data integration is a key part of Quantrix, so uh, we'll be showing, giving a brief demo on how to bring data into Quantrix. And then obviously at the end of any modeling project, you need to report these out to others, and that's what the presentation canvas is about, where you can build dashboards and, and external presentations uh, uh, in your models for others to consume. And then the cloud uh, is our web-enabled way to share models with others. So other people that need to use your models do not need to have a desktop version of Quantrix installed, uh, you can use the cloud or web enabled portal uh, to share those, those models with others. So those are the five key concepts we feel are important for new users to understand. And we're going to get right into a Quantrix demonstration and uh, give, you, give you that uh, opportunity to see the product in action. So for those in the room, uh, there is uh, an opportunity to ask questions. So in the uh, webinar go to meeting, uh, go to webinar control panel that should be appeared on your screen when you logged in to this event, there is a questions uh, chat box. So if you just open that up in the webinar control panel, there'll be an opportunity there to uh, type in questions. So as I'm going through the demonstration, if there's any uh, questions that you have as I'm doing that, feel free to type away in that chat box. We may be able to answer it right away in the chat. Um, and at the end of the uh, of my demonstration, I'll look through there and see if there's anything I can help with and answer for the group uh, verbally. Uh, if we don't get an opportunity to answer, to answer your questions, uh, please know we will do our best to follow up with you uh, post-webinar. So I'm going to go ahead and launch Quantrix. You've probably seen just a blank starry screen at the moment, but I'll bring that in here just shortly. There we go. 
So uh, I've launched Quantrix, the desktop application were written in Java, um, and this is uh, when you launch Quantrix, uh, this is what you'll see. And so we, this is our what we term our launch panel. There's a number of actions you can do from this launch panel. You can open up some templates uh, that you have on your system. You can open up some different sample models um, that are available that ship with the application. Uh, what I'm going to do for this uh, webinar is I'm going to open an existing model uh, that I have saved locally uh, to my hard drive, and we'll be going through some of the concepts that we have in Quantrix. I think that's a effective way to show you uh, what's going on. So, um, what is Quantrix? Well, it, it is a way for you, uh, the model author, uh, to be able to build multidimensional models to answer a particular business problem. So, what we're going to do before we even touch the software is we're going to describe a bit a in a business modeling exercise that we want to do, that we want to model um, in Quantrix. And so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to model a forecasting exercise. We're a manufacturer. We make different products or we make different things. Uh, we sell these products uh, over multiple regions. And we want to forecast the growth of our sales over these regions over time. So the nouns, sometimes we refer to these dimensions as nouns in the exercise. So the nouns in this modeling exercise, which is products, which is regions, and which is time, and we want to forecast the growth over time, these are the dimensions in the model. This is how we want to set this model up. So when you do launch Quantrix for the first time, you're presented with a, a canvas, or I guess a, a blank slate, uh, let's say, to work with. We want to give you the utmost flexibility on how you want to start Quantrix. And so what we want to do first is we want to define the dimensionality of the model. So two of the dimensions that I uh, enumerated there was we, we sell products and we want to forecast growth over time. So these A and B category tiles, these are what we call dimensions or sometimes we refer to these as categories in Quantrix. And I'll go to A and I'm going to name this right on my keyboard. I'm just going to name this product. So this is my, my product dimension. And I'm going to go over here to B and this is going to be my time dimension. So I'm going to forecast growth over quarters, let's say. And so I'm going to call this quarter. So now we've set up two dimensions. We've set up a product dimension and we set up a quarter dimension. And then under each one of these are what we re reference as items. And so this item A1 belongs to the to, to the product dimension. So I'm just going to, for simplicity's sake, I'm just going to rename this to be product one, or my first product that I manufacture and sell. And I'll just press my enter key on the keyboard and see how my my what we call a modeling matrix, this whole window here, tabbed window is a matrix, you see how this expands. So we have products one, two, three, and four, and it probably makes sense to have a, a total or some type of summary at the end of that to sum up all the products. So I'll just rename that last one to be total. And again, that's just pressing my enter key on the keyboard and going right to the keyboard to give it some meaningful names. Likewise, on the quarter dimension, uh, on B1, we're gonna rename this to be a Q1 for quarter one. I'll just press my enter key on my keyboard four times to add, or to add quarter one through quarter four. And I'll press my enter one more time. We'll just go ahead and rename this to be year to date um, at the end of this as well. So we're starting to build what we call structure uh, in Quantrix. So we've built a product dimension, we've built a quarter dimension, and we're gonna go ahead and, and, and work with this information. So uh, uh, again, going back to the uh, the setup here, we want to forecast growth over time. And so one of the things we'll do is we'll go ahead and just like in a spreadsheet, you can enter values into these cells. So in product one, quarter one, I'll just go ahead and type in a 10. Uh, we'll do 20, we'll do 25, and I'm just pressing enter on my keyboard to do this, and we'll, and we'll do 30 as well. So uh, we've demonstrated uh, building some dimensions. We demonstrated building items, and we demonstrated uh, adding cells uh, into these items as well. So we're ready to talk about our first formula. So typically in a spreadsheet environment, uh, one would want a, some type of summary here. Uh, and so uh, in a spreadsheet environment, uh, users would typically do an equal sign here, sum up these four values, get the answer here, and then do a copy and paste uh, across uh, these four cells. So you're talking about five formulas. Um, the formulas will say something like equals the sum of A1 through D1, and then uh, copy those across. So you have some arbitrary uh, cell references there, um, and you, had, you have to write five formulas to accomplish this task. Well, in Quantrix, we want to write a formula that uses plain language, uses the names of the items that we 
identified in the model, as well as we want to write one formula that does the work of many cells. And so we do that by entering formulas down here in the formula area. And so we're going to write a formula. I'm just going to click on the total item. I'm going to press equals on my keyboard, and that'll start the formula for me. So Quantrix formulas have two aspects to it. There's a left side that gets the answer, and then there's a right side that's the math or the actual function that needs to happen. So total equals, that's where the answer is going to go, and it's going to be the sum of product one through product four. And I'll close the paren and press enter. And so now we've got a couple of key differences here. One is this total sums product one through product four. So if I come back to this model later, it's very easy for me to understand this formula and how this is calculated. Um, likewise, um, this one formula is, if you can see this shading here, this is calculating five cells. So we no longer have to worry about copying and pasting formulas across many cells. The way we write our formulas and take advantage of the multi multi-dimensionality of the model, um, it just works, and it, which is which is really cool. We can do the same a similar thing here, where year to date equals the sum of quarter one through quarter four. And I went right to my keyboard to type this, and by using the tab key, that allows me to do an autocomplete, so I can uh, leverage the names of the, mo the of the formulas I have in the model. So that's all very powerful as well. So uh, we have year to date now equals the sum of Q1 Q4. So that is calculating this sum across here. Now note we've got an eclipse. Um, this eclipse means that the total and year to date formulas are intersecting at this this point or this cell. And this is what this ecl eclipsed language means and in this case the year-to-date formula is is the one that's actually calculating where the total stops right here now some folks leave these eclipses in uh, as as formula documentation which is fine it's a certainly a practice that we support and uh, but a lot of folks also will insert skips so if I just right click here and do an insert skip what this will do is it'll tell Quantrix okay uh, go ahead and do the year-to-date some one quarter one through quarter four but let the total uh, actually calculate that and that's what that what that skip will accomplish so uh, so far uh, so good um, I haven't shown you anything really revolutionary yet this certainly could be accomplished in the spreadsheet quite easily but now we're going to start to expand the dimensionality in the model but by, by a couple of things one we're going to write a recursion formula and two we're going to layer in a new dimension to make this a three-dimensional model so let's talk about the recurrence formula first if you remember if you remember when I set this model up we wanted to calculate our growth rate over time and so we do have the time dimension here in the model and what I want to do basically is that when I'm in quarter two I want to look back to quarter one and multiply that times a growth rate. If I'm in quarter three, I want to look back to quarter two and multiply that times a growth rate as well. So we're going to do something called recursion or use these recursion keywords in the formula toolbar to help us do that. And so instead of using item names, we're going to actually use the name of the dimensions in our formulas. So I'm going to start a new formula here. And I'm basically just going to say, okay, quarter this, so this quarter equals the previous quarter, so quarter previous, and then we'll just, for simplicity's sake at the moment, we're just going to double that. So we're going to say quarter this equals quarter previous times two, and I, I know I don't need to uh, calculate this for my total in my year today because I know I've already got formulas doing that, so I'm just going to preempt, preemptively say skip uh, year to date and total just so we can get that right out of the way way quickly. So let's see how this how this formula works. Well, you can see in quarter two, it's reached back to quarter one and multiply times the growth rate. In quarter three, it's reached back to quarter two and multiply that times the growth rate. So again, these three formulas now are calculating all these cells, which are, which are using plain language and far fewer formulas in, in comparison to a traditional two-dimensional spreadsheet. So we've got two dimensions in the model. We got quarter, we got product. Let's add a third dimension. Uh, so when we set the problem up in the beginning, we said we sell products across regions. So I'm going to add a new dimension to do that by pressing my enter key on my keyboard. That gives me another dimension to work with. We're going to call this uh, dimension region. And we'll go up to B1 here, and let's call this uh, the North region. Now, here's where Quantrix really gets powerful. When I press Enter, now I've got region 2, and I can rename this to be South. And I'll press Enter one more time, and I'll name this region East. And so I have three regions I sell to, North, South, and East. And notice how my model is expanding. Um, and if I just enter some beginning values here, I'll do 23, uh, 45, 39, 
20. Notice that the formulas are just working, right? I didn't have to worry about copying and pasting these formulas. I didn't have to copy and paste new row headers. By just expanding this dimensionality, it just works. Uh, we support copy and paste actions, so I'll just copy and paste these values down here. I'll just change up a couple just so we get some variety. But again, this one formula uh, allows you to, uh, uh, this one uh, adding of this region allows you to expand your model in, in, a, in a great way. Always on pivoting. So now we have a pivoted environment. Uh, for those of you that are familiar with the spreadsheet, um, being able to pivot uh, these dimensions, you can really move these to any one of these three places. So uh, if I demonstrate this, if I take region and move this up to what we call the filter tray, now I'm just looking at a slice of just north and I can switch this to south and switch this to east and view those slices. Perhaps I want product as a column and quarter as a as a row, uh, easily done. Uh, we can just flip these around. And these formulas just work. So if I modify this formula to do a 1.5, it doesn't matter how this is arranged. I can write formulas, I can do the modeling I need um, directly uh, in, in the Quantrix matrix without worrying about my positioning of, of where things are. So that's another key difference between Quantrix and Excel, and particularly a pivot table. If some of you are familiar with the pivot table environment in, it, in Excel, you know it's kind of a reporting environment. You can't do much with the formulas on Quantrix. That, that's not the case. So uh, let me move region uh, back to here. We'll get quarter and and product this way. So one of the things we talked about in, in when we're setting this up is we want to forecast growth uh, across these across these different regions. And so I have this other matrix set up here called assumptions. So if I drag this to the right here, or actually I'll drag it down so we can see both at the same time, what I want to do is instead of uh, blindly or <laughs> just just multiplying by two everything uh, as far as the growth rate, I want to have a specific growth rate by region. And so the way we do that in Quantrix is we do something called linked dimension sharing. Really easy to do. You just pick up this region category tile and you drag it to this new matrix uh, that I've set up. And now we have north, south, and east um, as a region. And I'll just go ahead and put some uh, growth rates in here. I'll put 25%, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, we'll do 125%, so a 25% growth for north. We'll do a 10% growth for south, and maybe a 15% growth uh, for the east. And so uh, that looks good. And if we want to have a growth rate by region, it's simply just taking the two instead of doubling. I want to go ahead and just say, oh, multiply it times my assumptions growth rate. So by doing this, we've now established a link here so that the region dimension um, is now linked and we have a growth rate by region. And so you can see here each one of these, if I make these all 10, my first values, you can see we're getting different numbers by region. If I take my north and go to 200%, then you can see that's uh, doubling. So now we have an individual, very easily, we have an individual growth rate by region. Uh, Quantrix has a typical number formatting controls that you expect in an application like ours. I'll just go ahead and uh, do a comma formatting and reduce the decimals. Um, but you can also do a round function. So any of uh, your functions you see in a spreadsheet, like round and average and things like that, um, are, are all available in Quantrix. Um, and that's all available through the, the function toolbar help, uh, which you have here by just clicking the F when you're writing formulas. So let's say you have this presentation, you go into your boardroom and say, all right, we've forecasted uh, growth rate for north, our north, south, and east regions. Uh, you present this to management, they say, well, we, we've got a new initiative, we want to forecast uh, selling our products in the west region as well. Even though it's a small example, uh, think about what you'd have to do in a spreadsheet. You have to probably go away from the meeting, uh, do a bunch of copying and pasting to expand all your structure uh, to west, uh, modify formulas, make sure they copy correctly. Well, in Quantrix, it's just this easy. And uh, what you would do is you would go to your, any one of the places where region, the region dimension is linked, so that's either in the assumptions or the financial statement, press enter once, rename this to west, get from accounting or, or your forecast folks uh, what your beginning values should be in the west region. And then just apply a growth rate and voila, you're done. Um, so you could do that on the fly. You could do that right in the meeting, right in front of everybody and, and feel comfortable uh, doing it in that environment. So that's really a, a very powerful uh, 
concept of Quantrix. Now you'll you'll have models that are much more complex, uh, uh, a lot more going on in them, but it's still the same concept. If this region dimension is linked throughout your model by just adding region, it just works. And likewise, if you want to forecast growth by region by product, it's this easy as well. Just link that in and start filling in growth rates by region by product. So as you can see, uh, those are all uh, happening on the fly and, and it, it's, it just works. Um, so that's one of the really powerful key concepts of Quantrix that, that, are, that you can understand. So uh, we're doing good. Uh, we started just about five minutes late, so I just have about five or six minutes more of demonstration that I like to do, and we can certainly open it up to questions um, as well. So data, in data integration in Quantrix, uh, that is something that is certainly available. I just want to give you a brief look at how this, this looks like. So data in integration in Quantrix is done through three products. Uh, we have data link that brings data into Quantrix. We have data push that pushes data out to other data sources, and we have a product called Data Nav that's more of a visual drag and drop data exploratory tool, more of a BI tool. For the intro webinar, I think it's good to understand what Data Link does, so I'm just going to edit this pre-existing Data Link that I have in this particular matrix. And Data Link, uh, you can connect to a wide variety of files, you can connect to flat files or CSV delimited files here, you can connect to JDBC data sources, so any database that's out there will support JDBC, um, so if you have a JDBC connection we can leverage that. We can connect to Salesforce, which is a, one of our relatively new features in Quantrix, so we can do pull data out of Salesforce and do some analytics and modeling, uh, which is a very powerful. You can use other Quantrix models uh, as data sources, uh, which is often happens with our customers. They build a nice uh, data set in a Quantrix model and they want to use that as a source for other models, and that's supported. And we also can connect to SOAP and XML type data sources that you have internally or out on the web. Um, for this particular demonstration, I just want to give you a, a look at what a JDBC data source looks like. So I'm connecting to the SQL Server AdventureWorks um, demo database that comes with SQL Server. We use a JTDS, JDBC driver connection. There's some others from Microsoft and others out there as well. Put in your port name, uh, server name, and database name. Uh, make that connection. Put in your username and password, and that con connection should go through. And the key thing about our, our data integration is that you don't have to write SQL. Um, we write the SQL for you. So in, in this in this area, when you pick the columns, like in the product, product line, so if I go down to sales, uh, sales order detail, um, I can go into, and I'm looking at the database structure as it is right now, and by clicking on any one of these, that'll bring in the column that I want for, for data uh, to come in. So that's, so the product, product line, sales, sales or detail, these are all things that I double click to bring that in. And what it does is it basically builds this statement for you. So I didn't have to go in and write all the select and the froms and the, and the, and the proper syntax. By clicking on the columns you want to bring into Quantrix, it just works and you're able to get the SQL for you. So again, this is another example of us putting into the power of the hands of the user um, how uh, the power of Quantrix, but in a very business-friendly, friendly way. So once that's done, you get the you get the things that you want to bring in. Um, it goes out and gives you a preview of the data, so you can see the columns of the data that's that's coming into Quantrix, and then you say to the Quantrix, how do you want to present this in Quantrix? So this is where this screen comes in. Where you, remember I was talking about categories or dimensions and items. You basically tell Quantrix which columns you want to be categories and which columns you want to be items. And so when you finish this, what happens is it goes out to the database and fetches that information and brings it back in a multi-dimensional way as you specified in that panel. And so I built this matrix from scratch based on a data connection uh, coming in. So we have product line as a dimension, we have order date uh, summarized by month as a dimension, we have the color of the products as a dimension, and then we have the order quantity and the dollar value of the line total uh, making up the item dimension as well. So all this can come in from a database, it can be refreshed on demand, so if you have new data coming into the database, you want to bring it into Quantrix, that's a simple refresh command that's done right up here uh, in the toolbar to update the data link. And then uh, you can visualize these things. So here we have a chart um, with a visualization uh, for the data that's brought in. I'm looking at my black uh, products that I'm selling. Here's the silver. So you have even the charts in Quantrix have a multi-dimensional feel as a, uh, uh, and allows you to do that. Uh, I can move color down here to the 
the row tray of a chart, and now I have a, a chart by color. So again, chart is charting is a multidimensional experience in Quantrix as well, and the data integration is live. Uh, you can update it on demand as, as new data comes in. So how do you report your models out to others? Well, we have a concept in Quantrix called a presentation canvas. And so this is a canvas that I, I pre-built, but allows you to build dashboards and reports to give your users the ability to interact with the models you're building, but they really don't need to know how to use Quantrix. You've set it up for them. Uh, you give them the tools that they need to do their forecast and analysis. And you can introduce these visual indicators called sliders uh, where I can manually adjust the assumptions and I can get real-time feedback. You can see down here, I'm getting real-time feedback as I make these changes on how the impact is. So as a manager, you can deliver this uh, to your manager. They can do a little what-if capability, a little what-if cap uh, modeling. And then over here on the pricing, uh, you can give them interaction control here as well. So I can just say, uh, give me $12 as my gadgets price, but the cost is going to be $7. How does that impact my overall profitability? And as you can see, as I make these changes, uh, things happen on the fly as well. It's very easy to build these canvases. Uh, if I sh show you a new presentation canvas here, it's just a blank canvas to work with. I'll bring back my model browser. And I can just drag in different uh, things in my model. And these are different uh, matrices that I have in the model that allows me to drag it in and position it really anywhere on the canvas that I want. So you can drag in and build these canvases in a way that, that I see fit. You can drag in charts and all those things. And you can really start building building a canvas, a building a report that you want your end users to use. I can put in pictures. I can put in those widgets. Uh, but it's very quickly you can get something that looks very professional and, and looks very nice. So just running up, uh, running up on time just a bit, uh, there's one other key concept that I do want to briefly show you, and that is uh, the cloud. So let me bring that up. So the cloud is our web-enabled way to share models with others. So in the in the Quantrix desktop menu, there's a way to publish these models to the cloud. It's very simple. You just walk through uh, a couple of publish wizard panes, uh, log in, and th this model on your desktop can go up can go up to the cloud and be viewable and usable uh, up in that cloud environment. And so this is our publicly hosted cloud. Uh, it's available at cloud.quantrix.com. You can sign up for an account here. And uh, this is, uh, we do have two different types of cloud. Uh, our, our Quantrix cloud that we host that you can use um, on, a, on, a, on a server. We can also deploy a web-enabled way to share models via the cloud behind your firewall. So we do have a version of cloud that we call Enterprise Cloud um, that allows you to stand up your own instance of cloud behind your firewall. A lot of customers do that for security reasons, performance reasons, uh, things of that nature. So I'm just going to log in uh, with my credentials. And as the modeler, uh, the first thing it shows me are all the models that I have on the cloud uh, that I've published. And so I can uh, I can then br use the filter here to bring up the model that I want. And so I have the intro webinar five key concept models published on the cloud. And when I click on it, what it does is, is there's a model server behind the scenes and it actually opens up uh, the model uh, much as you see it on the desktop. But I'm just using a simple web browser. This is the Chrome web browser. We support IE and Firefox. And I have the very similar uh, functionality uh, that I was just showing you on the desktop. So I can go over here, I can apply a new growth rate to the north region, and again, the model calculates on the fly. I can use these sliders to adjust uh, the values in, in any particular cell, and again, you can see these values on the fly as well. I can take my gadgets, I can say that's going to be $12, and my cost is going to be $8, and again, those are adjusted on the fly as well. So again, this is a simple web browser. You can share this model with somebody else. They can participate in your model. And all of this is saved. So if I go here and just say uh, uh, comment, I've entered my growth rate assumptions for the July 14th webinar. That'll save this back to the cloud server. And then on your desktop environment, you can check out via the via the cloud menu, you can check out that model and actually see the changes um, that you have that you had on the fly. The other thing you can do uh, with this environment is you can share this model with others. So if I bring that, that model back up, I can, you can see here I've already shared this with four other people. So if I go over here to the share icon, click this, 
click the little gear here, these are four of my colleagues that I've, I've shared this model with, and I've given them different permission profiles. So on Tom, he only can view it, but my other colleague, Jay, is a modeler, so he has full access. So Quantrix has a full uh, roles and permissions framework that you can use. If you want to share this with a new person, uh, just simply by clicking share, typing in their email address, um, I'll share it with our new account manager, Holly, and I'll give Holly a, a middle of the road user uh, level permission. You can also allow checkout or not, and that gives the ability uh, for Holly to check that model out to her desktop as you see fit. And here is the share to the model shown in the webinar. So when I click uh, share, Holly will get an email in her inbox um, and she can click on that link in the email and come into the model and uh, be a participatory participant in the model uh, as you see fit. And lastly, uh, just here, let me just close this down and let me just show you that on the desktop, uh, oops, that's the wrong window. Let me just show you that on the desktop, uh, you can browse the cloud models that you have published and I'll go ahead and find that intro webinar model that I have up there. There it is, I'll check it out. It's downloading it to my desktop. And if you remember, up on the web, I changed this to 12 and 8, and now I've checked it out to my desktop, and I can see I've, I've collaborated with others in my model, and I can get any inputs and any results that I have um, back on my desktop in that, in that cloud check-in, check-out environment. So that's um, our, our webinar. We've, we talked about dimensions. We talked about formulas. We talked about uh, data integration. Uh, presentation canvas and, and our cloud integration as well. Um, so this is a good opportunity to ask questions. So if you have a question, feel free to chat it in the question and answer box and I'll be happy to, happy to address those questions. Uh, one question that's come in is, uh, the question is back on when you're writing the original formula to sum the products, uh, notice that they were, we're summing product one through product, product four. What happens if a product five is added? So that's a that's a really good question. So let me go ahead and switch to that. So here, this is a different model, uh, but this shows you the answer, uh, basically. Um, so if you remember before, I'll go ahead and break this just so that you'll that you'll know what I'm talking about here. Before we had this total being total equals the sum of product one through five in this case. So, so what happens if we add product six? So I add product six, I'll put a big value in here. You notice this formula isn't picking it up because it's only product one through product five. Well, in Quantrix, um, we have something called, we can group our items together. So if we highlight product one through product five, and I'm just going to click this group icons, uh, group items icon up here in the toolbar, and I'll call this products, product I should say. And then instead of summing product one through product five, I can just edit my formula just a bit to say, why don't just go ahead and sum the product. So that is saying to Quantrix, sum this product group right here. And this is a much more robust formula. So now if I add product six, and I put a big value into product six here, you can see the formula just works. Um, so by grouping items using the group icon in the, in the toolbar and then adjusting your summation formulas to sum up groups, um, that'll make your, your formulas much more robust. So looking at the time, it's 11.43, so I, I did extend it by just a couple of minutes, so I, I do appreciate you hanging on uh, with me uh, with the webinar. This webinar is being recorded, um, so when we send up the follow-up thank you, um, I'll have a link to the webinar uh, so that you can share it with your colleagues um, if you so desire. Um, you have, if you haven't downloaded the free trial yet, you can go right to Quantrix, uh, www.quantrix.com, um, and there is a free trial link uh, right on the homepage. Um, that'll allow you to sign up for free trial and right here and allow you to download that. So thank you very much for joining us. Um, I'm Mike Salisbury again, Director of Quantrix. I uh, appreciate you having, having you taking the time uh, to learn a little bit more about Quantrix. Customer service at Quantrix.com will reach a bunch of us and we'll be happy to help. So again, thanks for joining us and I hope you have a great rest of your day.